How you doing? This is Gary. Um, today we're going to be breaking down Charter Arms 38 Special, uh, Detective's Edition. This is actually my daily carry, so that's why it's in the holster, and it is loaded. So we're going to go ahead and uh, unload it. Now as far as ammo, I'll show you the gun here in a second, but as far as ammo, I actually carry with um, 38 Special Hydro Shock. I don't use plus P because it's obviously an old weapon. I don't want to put any extra stress on it if I don't have to. But uh, I do carry Hydroshock. It's 120 grain. I actually really enjoy it. I put about 20 downrange the other day and uh, fired great. Not a lot of recoil. Um, and then for my range ammunition, of course, I use Winchester White Box. And this is like 135 grain. It uh, has a little bit more of a punch than the, uh, the Hydro Shock. My son actually came with me last time and he shot it and had a blast. I mean, he had a great time. And so, and I'll include some of that. So, here's a video of uh, Logan shooting the uh, 38. He's seven years old. So, enjoy. Boom! Yeah. One more. Yes, sir. What'd you think of that? That was awesome. You want to you want to talk about it? Well, for one, this is the second time I've shot it. We just shot it like like two minutes ago, and um, the last bullet I shot by myself, and it wasn't that hard. It brings off a little kick. It does a little bit of that, it does a little push, it's really cool, but it's all a matter of time, so be a man, man up, and shoot your gun. That's right. Okay, now, what we're going to do is start breaking down this 38, and I'll show you it right now, just so you see which gun we're talking about here. This is Charter Arms, you can't, obviously you can't read that, but that's the Charter Arms symbol. It's a uh, undercover 38 special, and it's got Charter Arms Corporation, Stanford, Connecticut. And anybody who owns a Charter Arms product will understand what the stat the, the Stratford I keep saying Stanford Stratford, Connecticut stamp means. Um, basically, for you that don't have a Charter Arms, the stamp indicates when it was produced, depending on where the factory was in Connecticut at the time. So there was Stanford. Oh yeah, Stratford. God, I keep doing that. There was Stratford, there was New Haven, I think there was Hartford, and uh, but anyway, there was a different factory at a, at a different time period, so that's the best way to date your gun, because there's no record of the serial numbers. So, first thing we're going to do is there is a screw right down here that's going to release the cylinder. So we're going to take that screw out and the cylinder will come clean. Now I will warn you if you have not taken your gun apart, um, this screw does not come out incredibly easy the first time. I thread lock mine from time to time, especially if I'm going to be shooting it more than once. And I really think that's what people did. So you might have a little trouble getting it loose, but rest assured that's how you get this to come loose as you take that screw out. You might have to uh, use a larger screwdriver to get it out the first time. Okay, so we get the cylinder free. It's out of the way. I always take that out first. That way I don't have anything dangling as I'm trying to work with the gun. Next thing I do is take off the hand guards. They usually come off pretty easy. And the screw has a tendency of sticking even though I clean my hand guards constantly and I actually use pledge on my hand guards and it's made them look like brand new again. Um, so I take those off. Now we're down to the um, uh, hammer spring. So we need to remove the hammer spring. Now the best way to do that is I use a thumbtack. Other people use safety pins or even a uh, even a paper clip, but paper clips I don't suggest because they are a really weak metal and they have a tendency to bend 
and if it bends out of shape while you're trying to remove it, it's not going to be good. So kick the hammer back. You're going to see this little hole here show up where you're going to be able to stick this pin inside this hole. Then you're going to let the pressure off the spring by allowing the uh, <coughs> hammer to come back and that's going to free up the spring. Now you want to make sure you keep that in there but thread it out a little bit so that you'll be able to replace it later. And make sure you do not have that come off of that otherwise you're going to be spending a long time trying to get that spring recompressed. I think I had to use a bunch of pliers and everything else. So now that that's done we're going to flip the gun over and this is going to expose your pins and your screws. So you're going to have two screws. You're going to have one here and one here. And you're going to have three pins on the bottom. One here, one here, one here, and one up top, up here. Now this one up top handles your firing pin. This screw back here, this pin, and this pin handle your entire lower end of your receiver, including your handle and your trigger um, trigger cover trigger guard whatever you know what I'm talking about um, then you've got this pin that handles your trigger assembly which we're not going to touch and lastly this screw here handles your hammer which we are going to remove so we're going to undo this screw first at least this is how I do it. I always undo this back screw for the back strap. I'll pull that. And then comes these two pins. Now I use a uh, Allen wrench, a very small Allen wrench for my uh, tool, my pin tool. A lot of people are against it. I personally like it because I can hold this whole thing in my hand. I'm not holding a little tool. I got big crazy hands so and you can already see it's starting to loosen up. I'll push the other one through. No problem. And this entire assembly comes right off. And it's just one piece. You know I mean I like to dust it. I put a light coat of oil on it just to protect it. But I haven't had any problems with this piece whatsoever. So we'll set that aside. Now, we need to remove the hammer. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm listening to everything going on in the house right now. So we need to remove the hammer. And the way to do that is this screw right here. Loosen the screw until it is completely unthreaded. It won't come out on its own. So you unthread the screw. I use pliers just to make sure I can get in and take it out quick and smooth. Lift it out. Comes out. Hammer comes out with it. Okay. So now we have it stripped down. I'm not going to remove the trigger assembly because that's just a pain. And I'm also not going to remove the firing pin. But lastly, this right here, your cylinder release. Unless you have some kind of crazy issue with it being stuck, do not take this apart. I've done it. I've gotten it back together. But I will tell you, it was not the easiest job in the world. If, um, if somebody has done it and is stuck, can't figure out why it will go back together, let me know and I will do a video to explain it. Or if it's stuck, I'll do a video to explain how to take it apart. But in general, do not touch it. Um, you will have to, however, adjust this screw on the inside here. You're going to have to keep it flush with this back plate. A lot of times this screw, as you're shooting the gun, this screw will actually thread itself in to where when you go to push the cylinder release, it will not release the cylinder. Obviously you can just pull and release the cylinder, but if you're like me and you're just a stickler, you'll want to tight or loosen it back up to where it's flush with the uh, back plate. So, I guess we'll go ahead and start by what I would do to clean it at this point. I always have some uh, toothbrushes. These are clean, they don't look it, but they are. 
Um, I clean them every time after I use them. Um, obviously, you want your loop tool with your cotton, cotton, uh, you know, I use these Winchester cotton patches. They work great. I also keep a length of rope with me, especially when I'm working on my 22. You know, a lot of people spend all these money on, um, what do you call them there, the boar snakes and all that. I use a little piece of rope. You know, I cut it. I mean, it's nice soft rope. It's not going to scratch anything. But I'll cut it, put a little bit of cleaner on it, thread it through a bunch of times, and uh, it does help get that little bit of residual off of there. And it helps to get into places you can't really get into, like say on this this uh, cavity here. Kind of hard to get into. You can't get into it with a with a um, toothbrush. So I'll use a piece of rope or whatever. And then of course you want your copper brush. I use copper. I've never had a problem with it. It does not scratch up my finish too much. Um, I always start with getting the loose stuff off with a with a um, toothbrush and I actually just clean this gun. This gun is you can eat off of this gun. It's so clean. There's not a drop of anything. I clean even when I'm not shooting. Um, I clean my gun frequently because I carry this gun. I want to make sure it is in prime shape. You can't really over clean a gun as long as you're not glue. Um, oiling it and oiling it and oiling it, you know, it's just covered in oil. Because remember, anything that has oil on it is going to keep oil on it. And oil attracts dirt and dust, so, you know, you can get quite a buildup if you're just like oiling and oiling and oiling. So, use very sparing oil. Um, a lot of times I will oil here on the um, hammer, I'll oil these little joints, basically anything that moves, I'll put a little teeny tiny drop of oil and then wipe it up. You don't need to leave a ton of oil on there, it's not going to help you. So for reassembly, we'll go ahead and put the hammer back because we'll pretend you know, we went through and uh, cleaned this all out here in the back. You really won't have a lot back there anyway because it is a revolver. So we just cleaned it, it's good to go. You know, we line the hammer up. The, the hammer, getting the hammer reattached is kind of a touch and go process. It's, there's no like, you can't just look and put it back the way it's supposed to go. You really have to do it by feel. And when you get it right, you'll know it's right. But basically, you have to pull the, the trigger just a little bit to get it to line up with the hole. And as soon as it lines up the hole, you're pretty much good to go. It will set itself after that. So then you put the screw in as it's lining up with the hole. And mine's not lining up right now. You really just have to line it up and it will automatically seat itself. Yeah, I got the screw backwards, that's good. So you just mess around with it until it goes in. And you'll know when it goes in. You'll feel it just drop. There we go. See? So that's in. And I'll go ahead and thread that all the way in because we're not going to do anything else with it. You thread it in. Make sure it's locked up real good. You, if you move the hammer and the trigger moves, you're good to go. Okay. Next thing we're going to do You've already cleaned this off, okay? We've already dusted it and it looks good. It's going to always be just a little dirty because, you know, this, is, of course, is where your hands, are, where your hand guards go. I'll check the back plate, make sure there's no serious pitting. I, everybody gets a little pitting there, especially if it's a daily carry. But I'll just check and make sure there's no, like, serious damages that need to be addressed. And mine looks good. Wipe it down. Line it up, and what I'll do is I'll take the backstrap screw, put that in first. That locks it in place, and I'll just thread it a couple times to where it's still movable, you know, so I can put the pins in. And I'll start from the back and work my way forward. Put this pin in. This one usually slides right in, no problem. And this one is usually, you got to play with it a little bit, but who knows, maybe today's my lucky day. 
Yep, right in. No problem. So we got the pins in. It's now solid. We're going to tighten that down. And we're tight. Absolutely great feeling. Next is the spring. Now, we'll go ahead and line that up. Now there's like a ball joint in there that you want to set it in. It'll usually find its own home. And then you line this plate up down here on the bottom. See if you can see that there. Line that plate up down on the bottom. And then you cock it. Because you got to make sure it's in that hole there. And you cock it. And it releases that pin. And then you can check the action. Because now it's basically a ready to go weapon other than the cylinder. And you see right here is where that um, ball joint is, right there. And that'll slide right in there. And then <coughs> you release the pin, you're good to go. I always put a little bit of oil in here. <coughs> in fact, I haven't done it today, so I'm going to do it now. I just put literally, I don't even squeeze the bottle, I just give it a little tap, and it lets just enough in there. We don't want to over oil anything, ever. And I'll cycle it a couple times just to work that oil in. And then I'll take a pad, <coughs> dab off any of the excess, because again, you don't want oil flying all over the place. It is a firearm. I'll put the hand, the hand guards back on it. Yeah, my son had a blast shooting this a couple weeks ago. We were going to go today, but it's been raining horribly. But he does love this gun, and I think uh, this will probably be the first gun I give him. So now we're going to put the cylinder back. And sometimes, before I put the cylinder back, of course, I will go ahead and copper brush the cylinder, clean it out real good, you know. And I, I use Hops Elite. I mean, Hoppy's Elite. I, I love this stuff. It's great. It actually conditions. It does a great job. Uh, this gun is ten times better today than it was the day it was given to me. So um, I'll go ahead and clean it. In standard cleaning, you know, use the brush wet, use the brush dry. Switch over to a wet <coughs> cloth. And when I say wet, wet with cleaner. Swab it in and out till that starts to come out a little bit clean. Then switch over to dry. Swab it in and out till it comes out for the most part clean. And then I'll take another cloth and I'll put a little bit of oil on it. I'm still using rim oil right now because I'm just trying to get rid of it. But uh, And I'll swab that through a couple times real quick and then run another dry cloth through just to make sure there's no excess. But that way, you know, everything's protected. And it makes it easier for you to get the casings out of your cylinders. So we're going to put the cylinder back on. So we line it up. You can see the hole. As soon as you can see the hole, you take the screw, screw in the hole, screw it in. Now make sure you're not, you don't have this thing fully extended out or it's going to catch on the uh, stop. I'll show you that in a second. Because I did that earlier when I was trying to record this and it just looked so silly I had to get rid of it. But there's a stop right here. And if, you, if this is down, like this, this will actually hop up and it'll go over the stop and you won't be able to close the gun. So, that's it. It's back together. We're good to go. Rock and roll. And the way I treat my barrel, I do the same thing I did with the uh, cylinder, which is, you know, wet brush, dry brush, while it's still wet. And I do a couple wet cottons. In and out, in and out, in and out, till it's just about clean. Switch over to dry cottons, in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll put a real light layer of oil in there, and then dry it out. The most important things you need to keep an eye on when you're cleaning these guns, and especially when you're going to go shoot these guns, is check this breech. Make sure that that is clear. Um, a lot of times, 
you're going to get a lot of buildup in this breach and that will throw off everything. Um, it's almost as important as keeping the barrel clean. Keep that breach nice and clean so the gases can explode and get out of the way. Um, and that's what things like your toothbrush, sometimes I'll take a cotton swab or a, a cotton cloth, fold it in half, take one of my small screwdrivers, well, like that. Don't put a lot of pressure, but I'll use that and I'll just go around the edge. See, I even got a little bit there. My gun's spotless. I'll go around the edge, and scrape it a little bit, and you can get some dirt. So now we're going to reload this thing and put it away. But that's how you disassemble the 38 Special from Charter Arms. And practically all year's models are the same. Um, there has not been too much change in their design in the past 40 years, 50 years. So if you have a new Charter Arms, it's going to be very similar in the tear down and rebuild. You're not going to see a lot of difference. Now you can, after you get all that stuff taken down, you can actually get into most of the trigger assembly to oil it, clean it, whatever you need to do. Um, the same with around the firing pin, back here in the action. You can get to just about anything you need to. So just keep that in mind when you start thinking about tearing it down is if you tear it down the way we just did you're going to be able to get it back together relatively easily you're not going to have any serious issues um, and you're going to be able to be back on the road very quickly it's not going to take you more than I think it takes me about 10 minutes to tear the whole thing down clean it put it back together so um, after with a little bit of practice you should be able to get it down that quick um, as far as this gun I really enjoy it it's been a great gun to